Welcome here, and this is going to be our five month review of the sense that we installed to monitor our electricity in the house. So let's take a look. First thing we're gonna do is head over to our panel box and uh, we'll talk about the installation process for this thing. It's pretty straightforward, but there's a couple of important things to note. So I'll go ahead and pull the covers off and let's get right to it. The first part of the install is these two clamps that you have right at the top. And uh, getting them around, pretty easy if you have a ton of room. Uh, although mine, uh, one of them was on, went on super quick and easy. The other one, not so much. You'll notice there's a zip tie on the one on the right hand side there. And uh, the tip for you here is make sure that these things are closed all the way and they stay closed. So one way to do that is to put some painter's tape over the uh, tongs and put the cover on and just kind of give it a test fit. Pull it back off and make sure that they stay shut. And the reason that this is important for you is I found mine was not accurate or not totally accurate and uh, that was the cause one of my clamps was open just a little bit. So the zip tie on there, I know it stays closed. That works for me. Both of these will have a wire that goes down and uh, will plug right into the sense unit. So that part of it is uh, pretty straightforward. Next thing you'll need to do is install a, a double breaker. And this is just so that your sense unit understands what the voltage is because voltage times the amps is how we calculate the watts. So that needs to be accurate. If you don't have room, the draw is going to be so small in this unit, I would have no hesitation piggybacking it off of another breaker if that is something that you have to do for your install. The antenna, uh, they did actually include a, uh, an extension wire, so all you gotta do is punch with the knockout, run the extension right from the sense box over to that and uh, the antenna pops in. So that's really, really very simple. Once you have all the three wires hooked up, you just plug them into the unit. And now you do want the app installed on your phone before you plug in or before you power this thing up. Uh, I think it's got a, like a 15 second window to identify itself with the app. So make sure you have the app installed on the phone before you do the uh, first or initial power up. And it'll ask you some questions about the Wi-Fi, etc., to get it, to get itself established. Pretty much the only thing that you got to kind of look out for when you're doing the install is uh, just make sure that you have room on the top of your box for those two clamps to go over the power wires. For me, that was the toughest part. I ended up having to play around there for probably an hour and a half, two hours to get those clamps in there and for them to work properly. That's it, after you got that fired up and you got the confirmed operation on your app, you can go ahead and throw everything back in there and close it up. Again, here I'm not trying to give anybody electrical advice if you're not sure what to do in here. This is deadly current that can be in here and keep in mind, even if you shut your main off, those main wires at the top, they are still alive. So if you're not sure what to do in here, I'm probably 80% stupid for going in there myself. You should probably hire an, a licensed electrician. A smarter version of me would do that. Although I didn't and it's in there, whatever. Let's move on. So after you get this thing all powered up, it's not going to show you all the fancy bubbles that you that everybody's seen. You'll probably just get the one that just says other. Or I think it even takes a couple of days before that thing even shows up. Power it up, let it find devices. As soon as it finds devices, you can uh, name them. And uh, that's a little bit of sleuth work to sometimes figure out what's going on. When in doubt, I've uh, taken and just shut everything off in the entire panel box, every breaker, and one at a time, turned it on to help eliminate it. Most have been pretty straightforward and you can kind of tell by the timing of stuff what it is to name it. The inside of the app is pretty awesome. This is the screen everybody uh, loves to look at. At least this is the one I love to look at. It tells you the water juice of everything that uh, you've got currently going. Plus you can play with the bubbles. I mean, <laughs> why not? The good part about this thing too is it lets you marry devices. So what do I mean by that? Uh, let's say your fridge has a defrost cycle, has a pump and lights and all kinds of other stuff in there. Uh, dishwashers like this too. Once you find out uh, the pieces of that unit, 
you can put them together so that they all show up. Uh, I think my fridge has a separate compressor, a separate cycle or something for the fridge and for the freezer portion. So I had to do that with the, uh, with the fridge. The aquarium heater as well is actually yeah, two aquarium heaters, not just the one. And that's very straightforward to do in the uh, devices tab. If you click on the trends tab, you can kind of see when I have this thing first set up. I think I had this thing on for about four days prior to this, but this was the uh, clamp issue I was telling you about. It wasn't reading accurately. It wasn't, I was comparing it with the uh, reading off my meter outside and it wasn't lining up. So that's how I uh, started doing some research and figuring out the clamp top to be totally close. So just heads up for you. But after that point in time, as you can see here, this thing has been flawless for me. Uh, from September the 18th, I think is what that date is. And there is a spot in the setup, I think it's under the devices or one of the uh, tabs at the later on, it'll let you plug in actually what your hydro rate is. So if you look on the top right of mine, you can actually see uh, it's got a dollar value attached to it. Now this isn't peak, off peak, anything fancy like that. I just put the mean number in and it's pretty close. What it is very close on, and the part that I'd really like about it, is the kilowatt hour usage. It's usually within three or four uh, kilowatts of what the power company has actually billed me at. So that's that's really good. So at any time I want, I can log in here and see exactly what we're using for power. Here's the power meter screen. And you can zoom in whichever way you want and anywhere you scroll it'll actually tell you the date, the time and how many watts you're using. And what's really cool of this is who says we're not creatures of habit, I'll zoom out to a month. And check that out. <laughs> you can tell there's a pretty good trend of when the power consumption is high, low and what you're doing when. I'm sure for us it's the stove and showering. That's pretty religious when that happens. So now if you're thinking, you gotta wait for the little bubbles to show up until you can kind of see uh, power information. You definitely don't have to wait for that. At any time you want, you can click on the now and it'll show you your live house consumption at that point in time. So for me right now here, it's showing 2550. Now the cool part about this is you can run around to absolutely anything that you want in the house and you could turn it on and off and you can see what this stuff actually consumes. So if you buy a new grow light and you do hydroponics, you can kind of see how much power your uh, your lights are using. So the easy way to do this is to, uh, to see what power something actually uses is run the app on your phone, run it on the power meter and anything you see here, you can do on your phone as well. And go over to the device and turn it on and you can very quickly see or off for this uh, this case here because it was already on but you can see the two bumps in the power jump down right away i usually give it like a five count or something just to make sure that there's no coincidence of anything else that happened to go on or off at the same time some of the ones uh, that use really little power like uh, for instance in my hallway i've got uh, three leds and I'll turn those on and you can see a tiny little, little jump, but almost nothing. These things are extremely power efficient. But just goes to show you, and they're insanely bright too, which is awesome. LEDs are just fantastic. Have them all over the place in the house. And then here again, turn it back off. And you can see the corresponding dip happen. If you want to see something a little more dramatic, I'll move on over to the stove. And this will show you how much power this puppy drinks when you turn it on. And I'll leave the number up there as well so you can see it went from 2,500-ish watts up to uh, 7,900. So massive. And then again, just turn it back off to see the uh, change. So that's a pretty cool function of this thing, live power consumption all the time. That has so far helped 
help me figure out my big draw of power devices inside the house, which we have almost none of. We actually do pretty good on power, I think. I probably use the most right now on uh, plugging in the car outside, block heater. Uh, my grow lights actually do use, because I have three running, and they're about 330 watts a piece. So that ends up adding up because they're on a good chunk of the day. But my water tank, uh, that thing is a monster. But I mean, without this, I would know where these draws are coming from. And once you see these massive spikes, you can quickly go around and kind of figure out what, what's sucking your power, even without the little bubble coming up. You can also zoom in anytime you want to anything on your power meter and it'll show you the date, the, sorry, it'll show you the exact time and exactly how many watts you're using at that point in time. So if you know when something big turned on and you wanna see, you can always check it after the fact. Now, onto the devices tab. Now, the awesome thing about this unit is once you have your devices set up and you have them named, and unfortunately you have to wait for this thing to kind of figure itself out, but you can click on any appliance that you want and it's gonna tell you the estimated yearly cost. So for me here with the always on, I'm using an estimated $244 a year of stuff that's just on in the house all the time. So the more of those things I can cut out, I mean, that's, that's some easy money I can save right there. You could click on your dishwasher aquarium in my case too, and it'll give you a very quick yearly estimated cost on anything that you got. So that's pretty cool. I really like that. Editing or changing anything inside of here is super easy. All you do is you click on the device that you want to edit or change. And in the case of me here today, uh, we just got rid of the old vacuum. And a couple of you may have uh, already noticed, there's two vacuums here. Now we only have one vacuum in the house, but what may happen here is if you're running the vacuum on one of the, uh, the power lines in and then you switch it to another plug in the house and it runs off of the other plug line, it'll identify it twice. So you can actually just marry that up and have it be the same device. I knew we were getting rid of this thing shortly, so I didn't bother. So is this thing worth the price tag? I don't know. Be honest with you, not sure. Uh, is it worth it for me? For me it is. If you intend on using the information that you get out of this box and uh, find out what's sucking power up in your house and you do something about it, you probably pay for this thing in two years is what I'm thinking. So if you're using it to find out what's uh, sucking power in your house, you're gonna do something about it, yeah, it'll pay for itself quick. If you wanna plug it in and just see how cool it is, well, <laughs> it's a waste of money. Go for coffee, maybe. Don't go for coffee because of COVID. I don't know. Whatever. Spend it on Amazon. Buy your mother something nice. She'll appreciate something for 500 bucks. If you've got a different power monitor that you're using and it has some other cool features or you're curious about more information on a specific feature of the Sense, leave it in the comments down below and I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. If you like the video, hit me up with a sub. Let's YouTube know that you want more of this mug and that bold face. Till next time, cheers people.